Hello, welcome to Helm Your Way with Kubernetes Tools in Action. Firstly, let me introduce myself. Um, I'm Anna, I'm a custom application development enthusiast and a fearless helper on subjects involving Java frameworks, IBM Cloud, I like Kubernetes, and also Helm. I'm also the co-founder of Bucra Software Craftsmanship Community, where occasionally I share my experiences in Romanian, my native language, so I'm Romanian, um, and uh, typically in this community we are always talking in Romanian. Uh, so if you're Romanian, please join our community. We share a lot of good practices, regardless of your programming language. Um, and in this talk today, I want to share a little bit with you on how we can use Helm to deal with the Kubernetes manifest files. So um, there are some challenges when working with Kubernetes. I think there are multiple challenges. However, I picked a few for today. And uh, one problem, and actually one, um, one burden that a lot of people see is the YAML files. Sometimes is the amount of YAML files. So you have a complex application, a complex distributed platform that you're working on. It's quite difficult to manage and update its configurations because you most of the time end up working and writing a lot of YAML files. Then even for a single application, you have to make multiple configurations and a solution around that is to hard code everything and make a big YAML file that's going to be scrollable. But you have one stop deployment that you are going to be using just for one namespace. Well, and speaking of namespaces, well, sometimes you notice that when you're working with YAML files, a lot of things are resembling, meaning the keys are the same, only the values are changing. So wouldn't it be that nice to have some way to parameterize those environments, those uh, stuff that you can use across environments? So this is where Helm comes into, um, into the point. So Helm it is the open source Kubernetes package manager is there to help you to work with related, bund um, related manifest files. What it does, it bundles them um, in a single deployment unit called chart. And um, speaking about Helm, Helm version 2, I'm going to speak about Helm version 3 a bit also. So Helm version 2, you're getting it from HTTPS Helm.ch. You can create your own charts. has two parts, Helm client, it can be run in, uh, on your local computer or in the um, CI that you're using, or in the tiller, the server-side part that is inside your Kubernetes cluster, uh, that can, or that it can be on local or in the cloud. And all the time when you're working with Helm, you always uh, have to initialize it and have to say Helm init, but in order to make sure that the client that the Helm and has initialized correctly uh, the tiller in in, uh, in the cluster. <clears throat> Why Helm? Well, Helm is nice because it lets you create your own charts and it can also let you use community charts. A lot of uh, tools, a lot of um, databases like PostgreSQL have community charts that you can reuse so you don't have to re-engineer in order to do your work. So you can reuse these community charts still together with your own um, and you can install them very nicely um, using the Helm client. Then we talked about the fact that we are creating a chart. Well, what a chart means is actually a set of templates and some values for those templates. Being, those being said, this means that those templates are very good for reusing. So uh, before we were kind of bothered by the fact that we cannot reuse, that we have to lot of, write a lot of YAMLs, now we just have templates and parameters. And another good thing about Helm, because we talked about parameters, is about the fact that you can use the same chart, different, um, different name for Helm 2, uh, for the installation, and promote it across multiple namespaces just using different values for that. So this is quite neat. And then you have the ability to validate your deployments. This means that uh, if you have multiple configurations for your application, uh, what Helm will give you is the concept of release, so you can validate your release for your application um, and thus um, see more easily if you have something went wrong for your deployment and where that happened. And speaking about Helm 2, in Helm 2, the releases were scoped to the namespace where Tiller was running in. Those being said, in the classical 
a Helm installation in the beginning, where Helm is going to be installed, it's going to be installed on a cube system namespace. And those make said that, that you are going to use a name for release only once. You cannot reuse the name for that release across namespaces. And this might be some kind of a, something that is bothering you. However, with Helm 3, that's coming soon. I put the coming soon because the Helm 3 is available for trial, but it still has the V300 unreleased on the website. But you can play with it as I did. And the nice thing about Helm 3 is that in the Helm 2 you used to have the tiller. But now in Helm 3, you don't have it anymore. This is a very great addition and it's because, well, Helm is kind of moving from the client-server architecture to client-library architecture, um, is more following with the Kubernetes improvements. And those being said, since there is no more tiller, there's no more Helm in it. And there's no, no more need for configuring the Helm home. So a lot of other configurations they used to do before with Helm 2, now they're not, no longer necessary with Helm 3. Also, um, the release names. We used to say, well, remember, I said that release names were scoped to the namespace where Tiller was running in. No more Tiller, there's no more scope to their namespace. So this means the same release can be now reused across namespaces. So you can use the same name across namespaces if you want to. This is another feature that is kind of good, and a lot of people wanted it. I've saw a long uh, GitHub issue talked about that one. And last but not least is about compatibility. So the good part is that the Helm 2 created charts are working with Helm 3. Trust me, I tried, they work. But for migrating them, there is a plugin, Helm 3, Helm V3223 plugin. Uh, what does it mean to migrate? Well, the tiller was removed, but if you're running Helm version 2, you're still having the tiller in your cluster. So there is a way um, that to prepare yourself to remove that tiller in a safe manner. Because that tiller actually kind of had some inf very useful information, and it was used for, uh, by your Helm version 2 to have the uh, point to where you were storing the releases. So you want to keep the history of your releases with V2 when you're moving to V3. And this is why it's important to go to this address here and look how to migrate in order not to lose anything. So it's important to move to the next things, but also it's important to keep your history while you are doing the migration. Um, the thing is that before they release were kept as config maps, now there are uh, secret stored uh, config maps in uh, the cube system, and now they're stored as uh, secrets in each namespace where you are installing or upgrading your charts. So for today, the playground overview is a very, very, very simple application, Java application, frequently asked questions application. It's a question answer application um, that I'm going to install with Helm. Also, I'm going to manage with Helm its persistence unit, the PostgreSQL database. Um, I'm going to stream all my logs to a third-party service, to the IBM Log Analysis uh, ser managed service, and I'm going to store the Docker image for my frequently asked question application in a private container registry. Kind of like in real life, but a smaller scale, to be said. And those being said, the first demo is the chart per service approach. Well, in the chart per service approach, what it means is that you are creating a Helm chart that describes each of your microservice or each of your applications, which is very nice and clear way to keep your application code altogether connected to the chart that is going to do the installation furthermore. Um, a con to this approach is the fact, well, if you have a lot of microservices, you might feel a little bit overwhelmed on maintaining so many uh, at the same time. Secondly, you will find that maybe there are some configurations that repeat across those uh, applications that you would like to manage globally so that you don't have to think about those um, in each and each repo um, by their own. But we're going to see like, how we can do that uh, in uh, the other demos. So for this demo, I am going to use, um, of course, a PostgreSQL database, which I simply installed with the Helm install command using the community charts instructions. So this is not very difficult to reproduce. You just go to the community charts and uh, use the command over there. And let's move to the command line. So firstly, let me check that everything's fine. Uh, let's 
Okay. Uh, so let's create the charts. Firstly, for creating the charts, Helm create command. Helm create frequently asked questions. Now, let me check what that generated. So it generated a set of files and of course some folders. Um, this is a nice error key. Um, a lot of stuff auto-generated for me and a lot of stuff already filled in. Some of them we're gonna modify. So going to the ID. The first one that I wanna modify is the description of what I'm gonna deploy, right? So the default is a Helm chart for Kubernetes. This is pretty generic. Uh, so I'm gonna use the effect of Helm chart for my frequently asked question application. Moving now to the values side of things. Make it bigger a little bit. Uh, this is also auto-generated because if you're just beginning with Helm, it's a good starter to install the Nginx. But if you want to make um, a, well, a custom FAQ Helm chart, uh, what you're going to do, uh, you're going to replace all these. So what I'm doing next, taking all this out and saying my custom values. Now, my custom values uh, take the image from my repository, uh, my private repository having the tag one, and of course, a pull secret to pull that image because, well, it's a private registry. Then I want to connect to the log DNA external service. I need a key to access that one, so um, that I'll take that key um, securely uh, using this name and the agent DNA key. Um, secondly, I just wanted to use some dummy script in a um, config map just to play around. I want to define the path where I want to use some tests for my Helm charts, so I can use Helm test against my charts. So I'm going to configure the path here to be API questions. Um, and of course, I'm connecting to a database, right? So if I'm connecting to a database, I need to define where is that database and what credentials there are for it. But what I'm going to use, well, here we have server, but actually I'm talking about the um, Kubernetes service. And just to let you know about this, get as we see, this many space dev. Yep, it's DB Postgres SQL. I'm not using an app actual server. I just give it server because it sounds more familiar. Then I need some um, information about how am I going to authorize myself against this Postgres SQL database. So I'm going to obtain those informations from a secret, from DB Postgres SQL secret. And I'm going to use a key for that. I'm not going to directly get that info from the secret. I'm just knowing the key to get that info. Then I have some information for the readiness probe. Just make it a little lower. Not to wait too much. Uh, actually, let's give it to 30. Then let's give it some port. And that's enough for the values. Now moving to the template side, because now I have to populate with these values the auto-generated templates. Now there's the deployment, which is containing a lot of information for the Nginx. But I'm going to use my own deployment, containing the information that's relevant for my deployment. Um, and here, I've modified a little bit. I've added some extra annotations for checking if the secrets or uh, configurations that I will define furthermore will, cha will, change ha will, some will change something in their values. So these annotations are very useful when the values for your config maps or your secrets are changed. Um, in, in this way, you are triggering a new, a new deployment. It doesn't look necessarily to the uh, way that your uh, template has changed, it looks to the values. Secondly, um, there are the environment variables, which I said earlier about the Postgres connection. These are defined here, Postgres server, username, and password. These are very important because I am going to transmit those to my Java application in this beautiful manner. So I'm never concerned as a Java developer about the values that are here. These are going to be provided for me from the environment. So somebody else is going to be concerned in providing those correctly. Of course, the readiness and liveness probe, like any good developer, I'm checking for those to be there and set up for my application to be alive and behaving as expected. Next, the service part. Um, this one, I'm going to keep it similarly to what was already generated, but I don't have some values generated here. So I'm going to use the ports 
um, port value. I'm going to take this one out and I'm going to define my note board for this one. Okay. And as seen here, I was already referencing two more templates. So I am going to create those. Because this is what Helm is really nice about, is the fact that it allows you to define your own templates. So you can create as many as you want. So this one is for the config map. It's a very simple config map. It will take the information from values.debug that eco hello world. It's not very complex. The important part is the labels because um, they're going to pertain to the same release. Um, and also next one is my secret. .yaml, also referenced with the annotation. So, and this one is actually uh, checking, I think I made a mistake here, but um, this one is actually checking if the log DNA should be enabled or not, so if I should stream or not my logs. And I'm going to quickly change this one to enabled, go to my values and say enabled true, enable those, okay. Let me just check if I wrote it correctly. Perfect. So what Helm brings very nice is the control statement. So it has control statements. You can use if, else, if, um, else, and, and of course, to check the nested value. So if something is probably not configured or you just want to toggle at a certain point in time, um, in certain locations, use these control structures. Another thing that I want to show you, well, because I said that I'm going to deploy uh, per personalized per the environment, per the namespace. Well, I'm going to use a personalized namespace. So for this one, I'm going to use values for dev. Values.dev.yaml. Um, and I think we're kind of done. Let's go and make the installation of this one. So say Helm install, I'm going to give a name because in Helm 2, if I was not providing a name, so the name was not necessarily to be provided in Helm 2, unlike in Helm 3, uh, there was an author generated name. So I'm going to give a name called, let's say, simple. Um, I'm going to say to install the FAQ charts using the values from FAQ values.dev.yaml in the namespace. Dev. So I think it's correct. If it's not, we're going to install it again. Okay. So I have a lot of things generated here. And you can see that the release itself means that, well, I'm going to deploy to dev um, a deployment resource um, that's going to create a pod. Um, I also have a secret. I have a service. It's pretty a lot of stuff here. Uh, so I'm going to check the status of my release. I'm using the Helm status simple. And see if my application is running. So yes, my application is running. Cool. Uh, let me just go here and get a copy paste it. Uh, where was that port? 31215. Cool. So my application is up and running and deployed. This was really nice and really easy to, to be done just for one chart. However, going back to the presentation, if you have a lot of charts and you realize that you have a lot of global configurations that resemble across those charts, perhaps the master chart approach would work for you. So in this second type of demo, what you're going to do is you're going to use a specific file called requirements where you can put the dependencies for your installation for the app that you're installing and afterwards you install the actual app. So what I noticed earlier is that, well, I was installing a PostgreSQL database so I can install that one first. I want to make sure that's always viable and I'm going to use the stable um, PostgreSQL community charts. Um, and I'm going to give it some text. I'm going to say database DB, like any um, good developer, and some more, so many more other tags if I want to. And next, I'm going to install my frequently asked question local charts. 
or from my own repository that's not exposed to the internet. So, let me make this bigger. This is the requirements file for Helm, Helm 2. We are specifying the dependencies and, of course, the uh, name of the application that you're going to install. Now, for the values part, in the values, you are going to specify only what you consider that's globally available. So you're going to define the database instance details that you're going to reuse at the frequently asked question application level. So you're globally instantiating this and reuse it later on in the charts part. And in the charts, let me delete this one, make sure that I'm getting the latest frequently asked question formula. So I'm going to use um, the PostgreSQL and I'm going to use my recently created frequently asked questions. The charts. Paste. Um, I'm just going to make sure that I'm gonna, not going to install a lot of stuff for my this. Okay, delete. And this one too. Okay. Modifying my template because I don't have the annotations anymore. So I'm going to comment on this one. Um, on the value side, I don't need these because I'm getting that globally. Uh, but the secret key, I haven't specified it globally, so I need to specify it here um, at the level of the application um, and use a different port, of course, 31216. And I think. It should be enough for deploying the master charts. Going back here, so issuing the same command, helm install, of course, giving a different name, um, master in this case. Use the charts from chart folder and the namespace dev. So many more things were created on this time. There was a deployment for the frequently asked question application, but there was also an instantiation for the database because this one needs to be created first. Uh, so you see a lot of more stuff with the master chart approach is much more easier to manage all at once, either your deployment if you want to do that, if you want to manage also the dependencies when you're doing this, so it's really cool. Uh, let me check the status of the master. So yeah, this is it. It is up and running. Let me just go and change this one. Google. Yep. However, um, this kind of introduces the tight coupling from the charts part. So you kind of couple the charts. There's a third way of dealing with things. There's a hybrid approach where you can keep the one dependent chart per service. So you still can create that. But you can group your charts, those that are chart per service, and have a master chart for that group. So this way you are uh, reducing the coupling. So you're not installing your entire platform all at once, but you're installing groups of charts all at once. This is much more modular and is much easier to manage. So this is the one approach that can be used when you're dealing with a lot of microservices in deployments. Now, some extra care is required uh, well, while using the job and the cron job uh, templates. With Helm, you can make templates for everything. So, uh, for example, even for job and cron job resources. The thing is that these resources, especially cron jobs, their cron job means scheduling, you can end up with undesired behaviors if you do not tell them when they should stop. So um, please pay a lot of attention on this one. And typically with Helm charts, you're not configuring the values within the templates. However, for the conditions that are to for hard stopping, I would advise on configuring them inside the charts just for the fail safe. This is my personal opinion. You can contradict me. Uh, secondly, some extra care required while using secrets, of course, not hard coding things in secrets. And there are some nice ways on how to use Vault with Helm and a lot of articles and, and ways to learn around this. Um, but what you should know, and this, the reason why I use two annotations here, is that this annotation that checks for the change of the value of the secret or the config map is very useful. It doesn't, it doesn't exist in the Kubernetes uh, typical YAML files. Helm has introduced this one and is really neat. 
when you want to re-trigger the creation of your pods. Um, and you can use as many annotations of checksum, as many as you want, because a lot of people believe that checksum annotation should be used only once. No, it can be used multiple times. Just give different names. I'm just put here a secret and config, but I can create as many as I want. Uh, and last but not least is about role-based access control resources. So if you want to have templates for everything, as def defined earlier, well, you can create your own templates in the, let me show you, this lovely file called <coughs> helpers.tpl, which is really uh, cool for defining your own templates uh, and reuse them across your, own, your charts. These templates can be defined for role-based access control resources, so including for creating service accounts, role bindings, roles, class role bindings, and so on, as many as you imagine. However, extra care when managing these, because whenever you work with automating stuff and for things that are regarding authorization um, into doing some things uh, or into doing deployments, um, there might be oh, some pain involved. Some takeaways. Well, uh, in a template, we'll uh, check always for the nested values at every level. Uh, do not hard code values in a template that manages secrets. Um, manage your um, environments having multiple values files. As I did, I had the values.dev, but I can have as many uh, values as I want. And of course, uh, mind the way you organize your charts based on the amount of microservices that you're having. Uh, and I think I'm still four minutes left. And I'm going to do a small demo with Helm 3, because uh, I haven't talked that much about Helm 3. So Helm 3 is really cool, besides removal of the, of the tiller, is really cool on the fact that it has renamed a few commands. So before in Helm 2, we used to have Helm install and Helm delete. Uh, but now the Helm delete was, in, uh, was replaced with Helm uninstall. Uh, which is much more cooler, if you ask me. I mean, how you install and you uninstall your charts. Um, there was also what I want to show you. Yeah, um, this is very cool for the master chart approach. So there is no more requirements file for the master chart approach. Everything was moved in the chart.yaml. And you notice here there is an API version 2 specified here. This means that, well, if you're having a master chart, you need to move your dependencies, as I did, um, in the chart.yaml file. It's really nice, it's really cool, so one less thing to manage, one uh, less YAML to manage. The rest is, is the same. And um, I was talking about, let me list. I have my master default H3. It has seven revisions, and uh, as discussed earlier, um, all my revisions are in the secret part. Come on. Yeah, default. <laughs> so yeah, all my revisions are uh, managed into the namespace where the release is installed. So th this is much more modular, so it's my, much more easier to manage your release. It's not something happening behind the scenes. It's not something managed in the cube system as it used to be in the Helm 2 version. So, like Helm 2, let's go to config map. See here, all my <laughs> revisions. Those being said, I want to thank you for listening to me. Please don't forget to rate me so I can get some feedback from you. Um, and I think we have like one more minute left for questions. So shoot. <laughs> you have a question? Yeah. Ask me. Uh, how would you compare the use of Elm or of one enterprise contender platform? Because I use Elm for the typical application but for many services, I always feel it's easier with tools like uh, Rancher or OpenShift and so on. And how do you oppose it this is Helm? It's complementary for you? Um, so the question was, how do you use Helm? 
uh, in comparison with other tools like the build, build config from actually the templates from OpenShift um, because they're similar um, and other tools. So, well, Helm is open source. This is the good thing. It's open sourced and it, typically it should work with anything that is based on Kubernetes. So every op Kubernetes implementation works with Helm and Helm works with, on every implementation of Kubernetes. Um, it, and it depends on how comfortable you feel of using Helm versus what you're using for OpenShift, for example. I'm coming from the Helm world and uh, adjusting to the OpenShift templates. For me, it was a it was a very huge step, for example, because I'm not I'm not used to that kind of um, kind of way to manage my deployments. I learned about it, but I would still choose Helm. But this is my personal choice because I have started with Helm, not with the templates. I don't use the template. But I was just I like it. I'm okay. You're the rancher guy. Got it. <laughs> Okay, uh, my time's up. But uh, if you have more, uh, many more questions, or if you want to discuss about any other subjects regarding Kubernetes or regarding Helm or Java frameworks, because I'm also programming in Java, not just loving Kubernetes and Helm, you can come to the IBM networking party that happens this Wednesday um, in the Irish pub. Um, there, I, I will tweet about it so you can see the invitation. I think it's open invitation for everyone. Just come for food, drinks, and nice talks. For, to get with me and my colleagues. That was all. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to rate. I need feedback, <laughs> really I do, because I don't want to ramble and talk of uh, things without purpose. And, well, enjoy DevOps. It just started.